Thank you, organizers, for your kind invitation. It's my pleasure to be here virtually. I'm going to be talking about the cyber agricultural systems that is, is essentially cyber physical systems in agriculture. I work at Iowa State University and the work I'm going to present is a collaborative work across uh, multiple uh, different researchers and institutions. And we have to think about the motivation for, you know, why, uh, why are we motivated about working in cyber agricultural systems? We all know that there are unprecedented challenges in crop production across the world. And in coming years, we'll need, be needing to produce more, um, you know, crop, you know, uh, more uh, requirements for food production, feed, fuel, all those things. And it will be done in a more adverse climate. And one of the things that we have is that there has been an advancement in technologies, but what we believe we lack is a framework to integrate these technologies and to provide usage as we try to solve these challenges in crop production. And that is what um, motivates the kind of research that uh, the team that I'm a part of that we do. Uh, our group at Iowa State University, we are in crop improvement. So we work on soybean and millets to develop varieties for farmers and industry. And we also work on crop production type of research. Essentially, we are aiming to create solutions for uh, with varieties and production systems that are climate resilient because as you know the motivation that I talked earlier, and then also they are sustainable and they're profitable. In terms of the work that we do, um, major themes of our work, they relate to integrating uh, machine learning in our high throughput phenotyping type of system to solve these complex problems, to uh, produce more from a smaller footprint. And that's where cyber agricultural system uh, that really comes into play. And in this one, in the work that we do relates to sensing, modeling, and actuation. And I'm going to briefly talk about those things in the next few slides. Uh, some of you or most of you may not have seen this paper. Uh, if not, here is the QR code. If you get a chance, uh, please take a look. Uh, this is a work of multiple different uh, researchers. Uh, this is a work that was recently published in Trends in Plant Science. Uh, this is my colleague, Dr. Shamik Sarkar. He's uh, uh, the first author and uh, corresponding author. And that's myself, uh, another corresponding author on this paper. So Shamik is a, a computer scientist, uh, an applied machine learning expert. And I'm a practitioner that utilizes these different tools and technologies and primarily you know, coming from the agriculture domain in the integration of those technologies. So uh, two of us worked with you know, some of the other researchers to come up with um, you know, the term cyber agricultural systems that relates to crop breeding or applications in crop breeding as well as in sustainable production. The main uh, topic, as I said, you know, was to uh, get us to think about what cyber agricultural systems uh, mean, and it is an agricultural framework. And essentially what we're doing is we're leveraging the power of advanced sensing, artificial intelligence, computational modeling, robotics, wireless communication, and scalable cyber infrastructure. And all of this is done because we want to optimize agricultural processes. We want to enhance productivity. We have to be thinking about improved sustainability and resilience in our system in this digital environment. And one of the things that we are hoping that cyber agricultural system or CAS provides is that it gives an overarching umbrella uh, to smart agriculture, precision agriculture, digital agriculture. These are all very useful uh, ways of thinking about agriculture. And cyber agricultural system provides a framework and an overarching umbrella to all of these. And what does it mean? Essentially, you know, if you think about cyber agricultural system, just like in a CPS system, we have a physical space and a cyberspace. Physical space is where we have the source of information or where the data is coming. Cyberspace is a space where computational modeling and decision-making recommendations are made, which are then sent back to the physical space for an action to be taken. There are uh, technical modules here. There are technical modules of sensing, modeling, and um, actuation, as well as uh, you know, to uh, think of in terms of the pillars, we need to be thinking uh, these are control, there's computation, there's communication. So it is based on the premise of cyber physical system, but in the context of, uh, context of agriculture. If you think about it, you can start relating to the, the sensing, the modeling and reasoning, and the actuation, as I said, the three modules of CPS, where cyber agriculture system, it moves from beyond just precision egg. Now we are talking about uh, ultra-precise agriculture. These are 
at a scale of individualized uh, sensing, individualized scale of plants or organs, individualized modeling and reasoning, going to the you know basic unit, not just at a large you know coarser scale, and then you know with the use of different uh, robotic system to take individualized actuation step. For a larger picture about it, you know, think of it in terms of the conventional agriculture system right now. Uh, it is, you know, a larger capital investment, and it has generally the management is done on a coarse scale. Now that is suboptimal because what that implies is that, you know, especially for regions that have large farm scale, uh, farm sizes, you have to go with a management system where you're going to take an action across your entire field. Even if uh, you know there are you know uh, certain technologies that are come uh, that can do you know uh, more prescriptive, it's still at a core scale. What sustainable CAS system do is or will do is that there is a, it is more affordable. It has a low barrier to entry. Uh, we are essentially uh, you know creating uh, sort of a modular way of looking at these uh, farm operations. And the scale now moves from a core scale to an individualized, uh, individualized plant level management. Now this, uh, you know, as I said, it relates to agriculture productivity, sustainability component, as well as resilience in the system. So this is uh, the overarching, you know, uh, view of the of the system. Now let's take a look at the three modules that we talked about. The first module, as I said, is sensing. This, these are sensing technologies, you know, all different kinds of sensors, whether it's in plant sensing, it's uh, advanced imaging, you know, soil, environment, multimodal payloads, you know, whether you're in ground or air. And essentially with these different types of data, you are able to utilize ML models. And these ML models are applicable where you're doing high throughput phenotyping and you can get, extract information uh, you know, that is going to be of use that goes into uh, the modeling and the reasoning. And in this modeling and reasoning, the second uh, module of CAS, uh, there is, you know, expert knowledge, there is information that is aggregated across the farm. On a breeding scale, as I said, it could be in the, in the breeding context. And we have to come up with decision-making tools. Uh, these are tools that are needed and they're continuously being improved with, you know, farm information. So it's bi-directional. And once, you know, a good um, a model has been created, we get management prescriptions, you know, that are um, very sensitive in terms of they're um, able to get to a precise level that I talked about, you know, in terms of the time of application, the amount of application, uh, any decision making that has to be done. And this has to go with the human in the loop. There is a plan approval. And this all is, you know, part of that modeling and reasoning uh, that I talked about. Once we have modeling and reasoning, uh, there is a decision-making tool, as I said, we have to take an action that has been, you know, approved by the, uh, by the expert and could be a farmer, could be a researcher. And in this actuation, you can think of some of the precision spraying, the autonomous scouting, uh, some of the dexterous robotic arms that can, uh, you know, take some action in the field. And there is, you know, an in-field intelligence. Right now, like if you look at this uh, quadrant, there's manual labor. This is the scale on this axis. This is the dexterity. Uh, current ag robotics, they're, you know, they're on a smaller scale. Um, dexterity is improving, but it's not quite there. But what we have on the farm equipment, these are large-scale equipment but they're costly and generally not as intelligent. Um, and they are scalable, but generally not sustainable. And where we want to go is to have these um, uh, egg robotics where you know, the vision is that they're dexterous, they're low cost, intelligent, and they work in a distributed manner and they're scalable. So that essentially is the, the CPS loop, um, you know, or the cyber agriculture system loop. In terms of our application or application that we have for cyber agriculture system, we have lots of different applications. Um, we are doing multiple uh, different projects. They relate to ground robot uh, type of phenotyping. There is drone scale phenotyping. There is satellite phenotyping. Uh, there is multi-modal, you know, multiple types of sensors, multi-platform, ground, air, satellite, that phenotyping. All of these are driven with the intent of extraction of trait features that, you know, whether it's an early estimation, early prediction, for example, uh, those types of things. They relate to some of the climate resiliency component that I mentioned. 
that relates to drought and flooding stress, heat stress, you know, temperature stress, cold stress. We're also quite interested in root traits. Uh, that's an area that is probably less explored, but you know, it's something that is essential if you think of agriculture production. And then some of the uh, components that form cyber agricultural system, whether it's in digital twin, which is you know a digital replica of the physical world that uh, can help you know the fusion of data and you know some uh, some hard principles that can allow people to explore the what if scenarios, uh, augmented virtual reality, and then you know some smart uh, phone. Uh, different apps that empower people, you know, in, uh, in terms of getting the information that they need in the palm of their hands. So some of the uh, research topics that I presented, uh, you can go to this website. This is the QR code. Uh, in order to get our information out to the general public, we have the, created these videos that essentially is to give, um, you know, uh, a public that is outside of our domain, you know, maybe non-agriculture related backgrounds, you know, uh, in the general citizens and the society that they understand that what is the work that is being done in public institutions, um, you know, these uh, educational institutions and how is it relevant in their daily lives? So if you have time, if you find time, you know, uh, I would appreciate if you could uh, take a look, you know, go to the website, search for Soinomics uh, videos on YouTube and, uh, you know, hopefully that uh, you find them informative. And if you're interested in the kind of work we do, um, some of the information will be there. It's a non-exhaustive list. It does not include all projects that uh, we have uh, going on, uh, but it will give you a glimpse of the kinds of work that we do. One example I want to give uh, that relates to uh, some modeling and actuation, this is uh, Egg Gym. It's a, uh, it's a gym environment. It's a simulation environment where there's an optimization framework. And the motivation here is that can we do localized chemical application to manage biotic stresses? Um, right now, as I said, generally, you know, a farmer would, you know, have a problem. They would spray the entire field or take care of that problem at that uh, level. And that is suboptimal. It's costly. And, you know, it has, you know, affects the chemical, extra chemical, you know, contamination, you know, runoffs and all sorts of problems. So uh, we're looking at, you know, this uh, particular solution. Uh, to come up with um, a tool that farmers you know, and researchers can use. And this simulation environment, uh, essentially it can simulate the biotic stress, could be diseases, uh, in terms of the evolution of it, the spread dynamics and during the growth season. Uh, there is a, an RL agent here. This is a reinfor reinforcement learning uh, based uh, approach where we are trying to come up with ways to mitigate you know, these uh, different stresses. One of the cool things, in my opinion, uh, this, um, in addition to utilizing, you know, uh, established crop uh, biophysical models and weather data as inputs along with other information, these are modular and open sourced. Um, and uh, we see this as important because, you know, no one tool can meet the needs of everyone. So if it's modular and open sourced, people can utilize the framework and then they can build, you know, for specific problems that uh, they deal with. And there is a benchmark and validations so that people have confidence, you know, in how it works. So in this work, uh, hopefully that will come out, uh, you know, soon. We uh, were looking at pesticide application, um, you know, and uh, what we found is that, yes, with this, uh, you know, uh, the egg gym, we are able to get more localized chemical application to mitigate stress and maximize yield. Um, and, you know, um, this is powerful because right now, as I, you know, as I said earlier, that we need to get to an ultra precise level, and this is just one of those examples that um, that allows us. So essentially, you know, what I'm saying is that you know, so far it's you know, it seems like you know this type of uh, approach can help predict eel losses with and without spraying. Uh, there is, you know, it can you know, have, there is a component of that um, you know spread dynamic uh, modeling. And then you know it, it can be utilized to max or minimize uh, pesticide application and maximizing yield uh, and you know obtaining uh, uh, profit. The other uh, uh, example is the augmented virtual reality in both breeding and crop production. There is component of sensing and modeling uh, in this uh, type of work. Um, essentially, one of the challenges is that it's very difficult uh, for you know a farmer or researcher to be at multiple places at multiple times, uh, and this is where I think these augmented virtual reality are very uh, uh, very effective. Uh, this particular work initially we started with just a laser scanner to get a dense 3D point cloud. Uh, now we have moved to a 360 camera, and these uh, you know 
this particular uh, environment can be explored with the uh, virtual reality headset. So this is rendition from the work. This is, you know, actually uh, from 3D Point Cloud. This is a nursery where we are showing, you know, this is with the Oculus. The, the person is, you know, pointing to this particular canopy and they're using it as a training tool. So this is an expert rating and this can be utilized for people to get trained in, um, you know, rating for these different uh, stresses. But it can also be used to, explore, you know, what was the observation that was, uh, you know, that was there. So there are multiple different um, um, uses for, you know, these types of tool, uh, as I said, in training, but then also to do some work. It can, is also a great tool for feature extraction, you know, not just, you know, uh, sensing at that moment live, but, you know, we create the 3D environment and we can uh, take out, you know, extract features uh, after the fact. So, you know, to wrap up what I'm talking about, you know, I, in, because I didn't have enough time, I didn't go into the specifics of crop improvement, uh, but I gave you some example, a couple of examples on the production side. Essentially, for approaches to cyber agricultural, uh, or approaches um, that are needed, I think cyber agricultural system does a great job in terms of, uh, you know, the future and uh, current and future challenges in variable and more complex uh, environment and and situations that we are in. Um, there are different AI tools that can help in this space, innovative solutions uh, in terms of climate resiliency. There is quite a bit of work that is going on currently in sensing, but a little less in modeling reasoning as well as actuation. So, you know, I uh, I urge, you know, my colleagues to, you know, start thinking about, you know, some of the work that they're doing, you know, how does it relate to these three modules of CPS and you know how can we continually make improvements in some of the uh, couple of these two um, modules? Uh, all of this would not happen working in silos, working in isolation. I think collaborations are essential. We need to pursue interdisciplinary teams. We need to work across disciplines, across geographies, and this is um, a CES enabled farm and research site. Um, in our in our own unit, we are getting very close to. Uh, having this as a reality uh, with all different components where, you know, all the connectivity is there, the cyber infrastructure is there, and then all the CPS uh, components are there. This is the team that I work very closely with. We call the Soinomics team. And then this is, you know, just a photo of the amazing work that all the uh, students and staff in the group are accomplishing, uh, part of uh, an annual, annual meeting that uh, we held. With this, I want to acknowledge, you know, different funding agencies that have enabled this work, and uh, an excellent collaboration with farmers across uh, across Iowa and the U.S. that really are the motivational uh, forces with the work that we do. Thank you so much again, uh, and hope to uh, you know talk to you or uh, in the Q and A session.